Welcome back to 10 Minute I.O., your bite-sized resource for all topics related to industrial organizational psychology. My name is Steve and I'm an I.O. psychologist. Today we'll be talking about test reliability. So what is test reliability? When it comes to gauging tests and assessments, there are two important concepts to remember. One is reliability and the other is validity, and they're not the same. Reliability has to do with the question, does your test yield consistent results? So the word consistency is central to reliability, and there are different ways to gauge consistency, which we'll talk about in this video. Validity, on the other hand, has to do with the question, does your test actually measure what it's designed to measure? So in this sense, truthfulness is really the key word or concept that's tied to validity. And there are different ways to gauge truthfulness as well but we'll talk about that in a different video. Now I mentioned that reliability is about consistency and consistency can be measured in different ways. I list five different ways to gauge test reliability here starting with test retest, internal consistency reliability which is gauged using coefficient alpha, parallel forms reliability, split half, and the last one is a special case where you have multiple raters, and this is called inter-rater reliability. The first type of reliability is called test-retest reliability, and this one is used to gauge consistency of scores over time for the same person or group of individuals. The logic behind this type of reliability is that a reliable test should yield similar scores over time. Let's say you took an IQ test and got a 134 at one point in time, and then six months later, you took the same test again, but got a 97. Would you think this test was reliable? I think not. Second type of reliability is called internal consistency reliability, and this is the one that tends to throw people off. Instead of looking at test scores over time or consistency over two time periods, we're looking at now consistency across the items contained in the same assessment. So here we're trying to see if the responses to a set of similar items are uniform or consistent. The key logic here is that a reliable test should contain only those questions that measure the same concept. Let me show you what I mean by that. We have two assessments measuring the same thing, sociability. The first assessment has four items, love going to parties, enjoy meeting new people, comfortable around strangers, and sociable person. You can tell that these four questions or four items are consistently, uniformly measuring this idea of sociability. So without even looking at the responses, you can tell that this particular assessment will have high reliability, high consistency. Take a look at the second one. You can see that the first, second, and the fourth items are the same, but the third item says, I enjoy learning about psychology. Now imagine a person who is high on sociability. Uh, that person may or may not enjoy learning about psychology. So that third item will tend to decrease the reliability for the second assessment. The third type of reliability is called parallel forms. Here we're trying to gauge the equivalence or similarity of two or more different versions of an, the same assessment that measure the same concept. So we're talking about the same assessment, just having different versions. The key logic here being different versions of the same test should yield highly similar scores for a given individual. So let's take SAT reading comprehension, comprehension as an example. Educational testing service will have multiple versions of the same test. So we have an example of three different forms here, form A, B, and C. If Joe were to take these three assessments all in one day, he should have, assuming that the test is reliable, should obtain scores that are very similar. So the correlation of the scores across these forms should be very high. In fact, above 0.75 or so, if in fact these forms are measuring the same idea. Now we come to split half reliability. This is a lot like parallel forms, except this is a lazy man's version. 
So instead of creating new forms to gauge reliability, we're taking a single test and splitting it into two, two parts, and comparing an individual scores on both halves. The logic here is that if a test is split into two, let's say odd versus even questions, then the two halves should yield similar scores for a given individual or group of individuals. Going back to the SAT reading comprehension as an example, let's say this particular test, Form A, has 100 items, or 100 questions. We take the 50 odd number items and take the 50 even number items, and we administer that to a group of people. We would expect that if a person does really well on the 50 odd number items, he or she should also do very well on the 50 even number items, and vice versa. So in this sense, we would expect the correlation represented by R here to be very high, assuming that the test is reliable. The last type of reliability is a special case of reliability involving multiple raters or judges. This is used to gauge the consistency of ratings across multiple raters or observers. This is often used in figure skating uh, competitions or gymnastic competitions. The logic here is that in order for a scoring method to be reliable, independent ratings made by multiple judges should be highly similar. So take a look at this first example. Let's say this is at a, a figure skating competition. You have four judges who gave 9, 8, 9, and 10. Assuming that this scale goes from 1 to 10, this particular performer did an outstanding job, and what we're looking for is not necessarily high or low scores here, but the consistency across the judges. So here we can see that 9, 8, 9, and 10 is fairly consistent. So we would expect a high inter-rater reliability here. In the second example, we can see that the four judges gave 9, 3, 1, and 10. This is highly inconsistent across the judges. They're, they're not on the same page regarding what to look for, what element they should score high, what element they should score low. Uh, so they're all over the place. And this is an example of where we would expect to find a low inter-rater reliability. Let's run through a quick overview of how we can gauge reliability. You can see here that less than 0.4 will be considered poor reliability. Between 0.4 and 0.7 will be moderate. And anything greater than 0.7 will be considered good. But also, it's important to keep in mind that these are rough guidelines. So depending on the type of reliability and the context, what is acceptable can vary. Before we end this video, I do want to cover or make an important distinction between reliability and validity. I mentioned that reliability has to do with consistency. Validity has to do with truthfulness. A few years back, when I was a little overweight, I tweaked the back of the bathroom scale to show 10 pounds less than my actual weight. Let's say that I weighed 230 pounds at the time, my actual weight. Because I tweaked the little dial, the scale would show 220 pounds. I would jump on the scale on Monday morning, and it would show 220 pounds. I'd feel great. Tuesday morning, it would also show 220 pounds. Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, and so on. So it would consistently show me 220 pounds, when in fact, my actual weight was 230 pounds. So in that case, I might ask, was the scale bathroom scale reliable? We would have to say yes, because it was yielding the same consistent results, 220 pounds. But then if I were to ask you, was the bathroom scale valid, then we would have to say no, because it did not give us the true uh, weight, 230 pounds. So the point I'm trying to make here is just as a bathroom scale can consistently show the wrong weight, a test or an assessment can yield consistent results in the sense that it can be highly reliable, but because it's really not measuring what it intended to measure, the test or assessment can be invalid or less than valid. That's an important point. Thanks so much for watching the 10 Minute I.O. My name is Steve. Stay tuned for the next video on test validity.